So this module is now, how do we change the settings? Simply, how do we change them? And indeed, what do the settings mean? So as we've been seeing, really, it's very simple. It's touch screen. You just go to whatever parameter you particularly want, change that, and remember to accept that. So for example, say we might want to put our inspiratory pressure up to 20. Uh, I'm going to jump straight there, OK? So I'm gonna, we can either touch the screen, or we can use our little loop, little wheel here to do that. Uh, whichever you choose. So I'm going to touch the screen. I pop that to 20. Nothing's changed until I now press accept. Now we've gone up to uh, an inspiratory pressure of 20. We might want to change our EPAP. Let's put that to 5. Accept that. Now, the mode that we're using in uh, BiPAP is something we call spontaneous timed. Whilst they're breathing spontaneously, that simply means they're taking a breath in and out. And remember, the auto track detects when they breathe in, when they breathe out, and it will go with that patient's breathing. That's fine. So then that's, that's all you're doing is you're looking at your IPAP and your EPAP and you're controlling the pressures. But then you say to yourself, well, that's fine, but what if they do have a break in their breathing? So actually, I do want this machine to give a bit of a, a safety net, a bit of a backup breath, uh, should I need to do that. So that's where you set your, your rate, your backup rate. Choose whatever you, number you normally use or whatever your guideline protocol says. Well, I'm going to use the number 10 here. It's a good, good respiratory rate. Easy maths as well. Okay, so I'm doing 10 breaths per minute. 60 seconds divided by 10. Equal breaths, of course, that's six seconds. So that's what we're saying is the patient's breathing spontaneously after six seconds. If the, if the machine hasn't detected that, that six mil trigger from the patient, it, the patient's not breathing, it will now deliver a breath for you, of course, over six seconds. So that's the 10 breaths a minute. It's like the machine's asking you a question, saying, well, hang on, I know to wait six seconds, I know to deliver over six seconds, but I'm not sure how you want me to deliver that. So what we need to do is, is set the inspiratory time, the eye time. And that's only in the spontaneous mode. The spontaneous time mode is only going to be used on the backup breath only, not on, not on the spontaneous breath. So I've set this to two seconds. If I change this number, that will, and it says nicely on the screen here what, how that will affect their inspiration to expiration ratio. I've set this to two seconds so that I'm saying if the machine delivers a breath, I want you to push the flow in for two seconds to allow them to breathe out for four seconds. Therefore, they're just getting a normalized one to two ratio. So I'm going to accept that. Okay, oxygen, well, that's fairly straightforward. We, can, we have the control to deliver that a percent by percent, and you literally have that level of uh, control of whatever percent you want, you're going to get. And of course, it's fully alarmed as well. Okay, rise time. Now, this is very, very important, and it's very much a nursing physio role. It's something to look at with any of you doing an observation. Now, the rise time, you can choose numbers one to five. Now, it's written down as whole numbers, but it's like putting a zero point in front in time. So 0.1 of a second, 0.2, 0.3, up to 0.5, of course. So what am I talking about? The time that it takes for the machine to detect that the patient's taken a breath, and then if you had it on one, within 0.1 of a second, it will go up and achieve your IPAP. If you have it on five, of course, it's going to be much, much more gradual. Okay? So that's what it's doing. But we have to ask ourselves, well, that's interesting, but how do I set that? This is a really easy way to know how to set it correctly. And it comes back to that number of the PIP, the peak inspiratory pressure. So I want an IPAP of 20, and we should hopefully be seeing a number 20 as we are. But it may be that you see something like this, where the machine is saying 16 or 17. And that's going back to the, right back to the introduction module where we said the auto track lets them breathe in when they want and lets them breathe out when they want. Okay, so if you've set 20 of IPAP, don't assume that they're getting it because they may breathe out in this case, as, as shown here, before it achieves the IPAP. So simply go to your rise time, pop it down a number, press accept, and observe your PIP, and let's see what happens. Now, if it hits 20, fine, but if it hasn't, then go back to another one, pop it down another one, until eventually your PIP matches your IPAP. So a little saying that may help you, if, your PIP, which we want to equal your IPAP, if your PIP is a lower number than your set IPAP, simply lower your rise time number and do it just by one at a time. You may see times where it's above, it's, in, it's higher than the number that you want, so just increase your rise time number to whatever's required until you get the right pressure, the right number. So lastly, when it comes to settings, um, all those that we've talked about are essential to check and set this last one is an optional uh, feature, and it's 
basically called a ramp feature. So you could uh, set your top, your pressures that you want, so they'd be diagnosed with type 2, your doctor's come along and said, right, can you try and achieve a, a, an IPAP of 20 and an EPAP of 5? Fine. What you could then do is say, right, I'm going to let the machine drop its pressure and over time that I'm going to specify achieve that pressure. So you can choose anything from 5 minutes to 45 minutes. Now in the acute setting, so remember we're setting our patient up, you probably want to choose 20, 25, possibly even 30 minutes. So I'm going to choose 25 minutes. Now, when you do that, it will then tell you what it's going to do when it starts. So it does a calculation, says like in this case, I will start at 11 over 4. So I'm going to start that. Now the pressure will drop, okay, go right down to 11 over 4. Over your 25 minutes, your EPAP very simply goes from 4 to 5, and your IPAP, of course, goes from 11 to 12 to 13 until you eventually hit your 20 over 5. The subtle difference being that it does the maths for you, okay, but what it does when it makes a change is just go up by 0.1 of a centimetre every time. So it's a very, very subtle way of introducing or reintroducing somebody to high pressures and uh, has been proven to be very, very useful to settle patients on that. So that's how to set up the BiPAP. Well, what if we want to use it in CPAP? Well, that's simple. Just go to the Modes button, choose your CPAP. Now, it's all greyed out, so you're still in BiPAP at this point, and choose what you want. Well, CPAP is simply the pressure you want, whatever number you decide with, accept that, and then you choose your oxygen. And I'm now going to accept or rather activate the new mode, very important to do that, otherwise you haven't changed the mode. Once you've activated it, now we're in CPAP. And then you have the option, you could use the ramp for that as well, so you could set a higher CPAP and let the ramp do that. Uh, and then you have this flow flexibility, which is essentially choosing numbers one to three, and one is gonna be a little bit, two is gonna be a little bit more, and three is the most of a flow drop at a time when the patient doesn't need it. So this is a comfort feature for somebody on CPAP. So say you've got it on two, what happens is as the patient inhales, they fully expand their lungs. As they start to breathe out, rather than conventional CPAP that they're straight away against the flow, the, the flow flexibility, the C-flex will say, well look, I can detect that they're breathing out, I'll drop my flow a certain amount, but follow that patient's breathing so that at end expiration I'll have enough flow to deliver the CPAP that I want. So you won't lose CPAP, but what you will get is a bit of a flow dip at the beginning of exhalation, making CPAP much more comfortable for them. So that's all there is to, to setting the CPAP up. So that's pretty much the settings BiPAP and CPAP on the V60. So lastly, back into the modes, you have other modes available. You have pressure control ventilation, you have averaged volume assured pressure support, so that's a volume mode using still delivering pressure support, and then you have proportional pressure ventilation. And this is more detailed and possibly better to look at in the handbook or ask your local representative to come and tell you a little bit more about those modes.